Good afternoon. So I'm a, I'm a big science fiction fan, and I'll often go back and rewatch some of the classics. And it's always so disappointing because there's all this amazing futuristic technology that has just never panned out. So for example, in the 60s, we were promised a single piece of tech that could sense all of your vital signs and could even detect disease. But here in 2018, our sensing technology is still struggling with tracking expiration dates. In the 80s, we were promised futuristic cities that were ultra-connected and highly intelligent. But right now, connected homes are the best we've got, and the highlights there are refrigerators that run Windows. And in terms of wearables, we were promised these incredible armored suits with heads-up displays, and I don't know, does this count? Okay, I know I've, I've chosen some pretty awful examples, but I think everybody in this room sees the potential for printed electronics to solve some of these problems. And that's got me wondering, where the hell is the PE industry that I was promised? Maybe, maybe the technology is just not there yet. Maybe that's it. Well, lightweight, flexible screens, yep, we've got those. Intelligent and useful wearables, yep, more and more of those. Low cost consumer packaging, big strides in that area. So it doesn't look like technology is the limiting factor anymore, so maybe it's something else. Maybe it's the people designing the PE devices. Who is that exactly? Is that PE engineers? Well, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a job posting for a printed electronics engineer, and apparently neither have the job posting sites. Electronics engineer? Sure, plenty of those. Printed electronics, not so much. And yet somehow our industry keeps moving forward under the impression that you need a PhD in material science when all electronics products are developed by electronics engineers. So I hate to break it to you, but if we want to see growth in our space, the electronics developers are who we need to be focusing on. But this is how they think of us. We're the weirdos that show up year after year with the same demos of flashing LEDs that only impress us and fancy chemistry words that honestly scare the bejeebus out of them. Actually, no, it's worse than that because they don't even know who we are. They've never heard of you or your companies or what you can do to help them. And the few that have probably gave up on trying to use our technologies because it's just too damn difficult. And I can say that because I used to be one of those electronics developers that had never heard of PE. And then I started a PE company and found it ridiculously difficult to work with others in our space. With every product that my business partners and I developed at all the companies that we've worked for, we always struggled for quick and affordable access to prototype circuit boards. And that's why we created the V1. It is a desktop circuit board printer, can print a circuit that's fully functional in less than an hour compared to waiting days or weeks for it to come back from a factory. But I'm not up here to talk about our spec or convince you to buy one. The point I'm trying to make is that we're a company of electronics developers. So are all of our friends, and so are all of our customers. So I know what that process looks like for getting a device to production. And it's most fundamental, it's just this. Come up with an idea, prototype it, iterate on the design with higher and higher batches until you finally hit volume manufacturing. It's obvious, it's simple. It's the tried and tested method for creating electronics. And yet when it comes to creating printed electronics, we pretend that it looks like this. I'm, this presentation is titled The Missing Link of Printed Electronics, right? Well, here it is. Okay, so let's, let's try something. I'm, I'm gonna need people to raise their hand. Who here is a uh, manufacturer or sells inks or substrates? Okay, we've got a few. Uh, what about contract manufacturers? Okay, no one in this session. Uh, trade organizations or media? All right, who's just too jet lagged to raise their hand? <laughs> most, most of the, okay. Um, well, if you're a supplier or a CM or an organization that's supposed to be talking about the successes of this industry, odds are you've already invested a ton into R&D, equipment, running events, and 
Honestly, it's in your best interest to focus on the people that are already here. I get it. But how many more people could we get to production if we focused and we invested a little bit in the companies stuck in the blank spots, in the companies that have not heard of PE yet? Like, I'm sure many of you have taken products to market before, so you know how difficult it is. Would you go through all of that time and that cost and that risk if you barely understood what PE was or how to get to production? If we want to see adoption, electronics engineers need to understand the path from ideation to production. And the only way to understand that path is to have the right education, the right tools, and materials specific to the applications that they're interested in. Let's quickly go through each of those. I've always said that the biggest challenge facing our company is not that people have never heard of Volterra, it's that people have never heard of the concept of printing circuits. That's starting to change now because of our work and the work of others in our space, but it's still an uphill battle. Fortunately, using our printer to create standard rigid PCBs is a great stepping stone to learning about these new possibilities, but even then, that's not enough. We need to go beyond just proof of concepts if we want to inspire people to create and to innovate. And the way we do that is to showcase the companies that have already made it, tell their stories, show everybody what their path looked like from ideation to prototype to scale up to production to generating profit from a product in the customer's hands. Obviously, the next generation of product developers need to be PE designers by default. Electronics design with and without conductive inks need to be taught together like they are here. This is one of the high schools that has a Volterra V1 on every workbench in their electronics labs. Equipment. Okay, so let's say you're developing a mechanical part. You can get through your first few iterations by 3D printing it, but really quickly you want to make sure your design is injection moldable. Well, it's the same thing in our space. Earlier this year, there was an ID Tech X webinar where it was being discussed that more and more companies are adopting inkjet and aerosol systems into their early development because it's just more flexible than screening. And this is despite the fact that these tools tend to be more expensive, uh, more difficult to use, require extensive on-site training, uh, or have some other upfront cost. And it can do that because it has got this one major benefit no tooling. You can create infinitely many designs without having to invest the money or the time into creating a new screen for each design. But if screen printing is still the mass manufacturing method of choice, and it doesn't look like that's changing, and if you want to make sure your design is mass manufacturable as early as possible, doesn't it make sense to have prototyping equipment that is more representative of screen printing? The V1 and other equipment that we're currently developing, they don't need tooling. They're screenless screen printers. And because they're compatible with a wide range of rheological profiles, we are making screen printing inks accessible in low volumes. Accessible. If you've listened to my presentations at this event in previous years, you'll know that that's something that we spend a lot of time thinking about at Volterra. It starts with our price point but it's really exemplified in the design of the product. The fact that it's so simple that you can take it out of the box, plug it in, and get to work right away. Even our software feels more like an app on your phone rather than the command line interfaces we've all probably used with lab equipment in the past. That image in the top right, that's actually a series of videos that guides the user through every single step of the printing process. And that chat bubble in the bottom right allows them to contact us at any point if they need help. We do our best to support them as much as possible, to abstract out all of the chemistry, to fade away all of the complexity so that they can focus on what they do best, being creative, solving problems, designing products. Materials. So when we first started Volterra, we reached out to ink and substrate suppliers for advice and for samples of their materials. And keep in mind, just like hundreds of thousands of electronics developers today, we had no idea what we were doing. We had no background with those sorts of materials. In the best cases, 
We were given minimum order quantities that were so ridiculous that it was obvious that they were trying to get rid of us. And in the worst cases, we were just ignored. In the few instances that we actually got our hands on inks, I can't tell you the number of times the material did not match the data sheet. And that's why one of the things that we're currently working on is benchmarking and marketing services for suppliers. See, suppliers want to get their whatever, their ink, for example, into the hands of product developers as early in the design process as possible, because that increases the likelihood of being locked into the final design. We just so happen to have a massive install base of excitable electronics engineers who have a tool that can allow them to test any ink that we sell them. And from their perspective, from the user's perspective, they'll be offered a library of materials that they can pick and choose from depending on their application. Stretch, Flex, um, RF, LTCC, what have you. And once they've chosen their material, they can be rest assured that we have validated the data sheets, that we will have stock in low volumes so that they don't need to deal with minimum order quantities. And we'll even design little mini projects for them to get started so that they can test out a material and understand its properties, understand what it would look like in their product. And then, once we've helped them through ideation, <laughs> through uh, prototyping and starting into scaling up, we'll say, why are you still talking to us? This is the company that makes the ink that you're using. Go buy in bulk. Here's an introduction to a contract manufacturer we've worked with in the past. Go start screening your products. Listen, I really, really want to live in these worlds. But saying that the printed electronics industry needs to level up in order to make that happen is obviously a stretch. But I just needed something to, something catchy to start this talk. But it's also not entirely untrue. Science fiction can inspire people to create incredible new technologies. But if we keep focusing on the end goal and not the journey, I promise you, I promise you that at this event in five years, there will still not be any new faces. At Volterra, we believe that if we all focus on these building blocks, if we all focus on going home and answering the question, what can my company do to help educate or support a product developer that has never heard of PE before, never worked with these sorts of technologies before, then maybe, just maybe, I won't need to wear this. Thank you. <laughs>